Good evening. So the first thing I should probably tell you is, if you haven't figured out already, I'm a geek. <laughs> I'll just lay that out there. Um, you know, when I was a kid, 6 p.m. at night was a magical time for me. It was a time when dinner was done, I'd run to my room, I had a little orange black and white television set in my room, it got four channels, ABC, CBS, and NBC, and it also got the PBS station locally here. And that's when Doctor Who came on. Doctor Who was an amazing show, and still is, I still watch it to this day, that taught me a lot. Before I was a Christian, I got my sense of morality from watching Doctor Who. I learned a lot by watching the show. And for those of you who don't know who the Doctor is, that's his TARDIS, that's his time machine. TARDIS stands for Time and Relative Dimensions in Space. The Doctor, the main character, travels through time and space, picking up Earthlings along the way, to make the fun more relatable to us, and just solves problems of the world. Um, all kinds of problems, social injustices, um, major fights, major battles. And he goes in without a gun, without a weapon, and saves the day. Um, and I learned, just by watching that show, three very important things about time itself. Number one, time is relative. Number two, time is not to be feared, and number three, Time is precious. I want to talk about time being relative, and I'm not, so if you're a scientist, don't, don't berate me. I'm not trying to rewrite Einstein. This is not about Einstein's theory of relativity. But we've all had those moments in life, haven't we, where something happens, and it's an amazing thing, and time just seems to expand. We just are living in that moment for what feels like an eternity. Or sometimes the opposite extreme. Time speeds up. You know, as a kid, you can't wait for Christmas to come and it feels like it's forever. And as an adult, it's already October and they're putting things on the shelves for Christmas and it's gonna be here before you know it. That's part of the uh, problem of the, uh, our, our shopping industry. But, but we all have those experiences where time just feels like it's that wonderful moment that lasts for a while. Something else you need to know about me is that I'm adopted. And Doctor Who, and being adopted are two things that actually have really structured my life in ways that were completely unexpected to me. Being adopted and finding out when I was in fifth grade that I was adopted obviously led to, led to a lot of questions that I wasn't expecting to have to ask my parents about who I am and where I come from. But over time, I started to embrace the fact that I was adopted. It became such a big part of me that when I got older, I knew I wanted to adopt a child. So I'm in my 30s, I've been married and then divorced without a kid, and it was really heartbreaking. I really wanted a child. So back to that idea of relativity and that time goes at different paces. When we watch Doctor Who, many of the episodes have great storylines where one character is going through time at a different rate than another. And I relate that back to the adoption of my son, Richie. So his story is a sad one. Starting out, age five, he was put in foster care. He was in foster care from age five to age 13. In fact, he was in 15 different foster homes, and he suffered through a failed adoption. When I found him online, I talked with his social worker, I read his background, I read all the information about him, and finally it came to the day where the social worker said, okay, we think this is gonna work out, can you come meet with me up in Cleveland? That's where he was living at the time. So I drive up to Cleveland, and I'm up there working with, um, talking with his social worker, talking, talking with his counselors, his teachers, because they wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna to do to him what someone else did to him. So they came up with a plan. I was to be his mentor. That's the way we're gonna present me to him. I'm gonna mentor him. So I'm gonna come up on weekends and hang out with him. I agreed to that. I understood what he had gone through. So we go up there and we go to a small little office and we decide, hey, let's go get Richie and introduce you guys. So he comes out, he sits down, we chat for a little bit, Kim introduces me as his mentor, I'm gonna come up on the weekends and hang out with him and be his buddy. We play basketball, you know, we, we walk around the school, Kim says, let me give you guys some time to yourself. So he starts showing me his different classrooms, talking about the teachers he liked, his art class that he loved, teachers he didn't like, it was a big residential um, school there where he lived. He's like, let me show you my room. I'm like, great. 
So we're walking down the hallway, this long hallway with rooms all on each side of all these boys who were living in residential care. We got almost to his room, and this other kid comes running up towards us and, hey, Richie, who's that guy with you? Richie grabs my hand and says, this is my pop. He's going to be my new father. That's one of those moments that live for me in eternity. That moment seemed to go on forever. I had to turn my head away because, number one, he wasn't supposed to <laughs> realize that, but he did. He was smart. People didn't give him enough credit for his intelligence. But my heart just melted in that moment. I knew he was going to be mine. He knew I was going to be his. So let's talk about time being nothing to fear. So when you look at Doctor Who, and the character who's played Doctor Who has changed from 1963 all the way to present day, and they get a new actor to play the Doctor, and what they do that in the storyline is the Doctor regenerates, gets a new body, and moves forward. The Doctor has nothing to fear. The Doctor keeps going on from time to time. It's been going on since 1963, and they've had 13, 14 different people play the Doctor. Um, so for him, and in this case now her, there's a new doctor on the scene who's a woman, it just keeps going. Time is nothing to be feared for him. And when you watch the different storylines that unfold, he even gets to this point of bravado where time is not the boss of me. So let me take you back to Richie. He hadn't had a lot of success in life. School was a tough time for him. Um, we had some behavior challenges. Those teenage years were not a lot of fun for us. Um, but he finally got into a program that he was going to get his GED through. And we were so excited for that because it came to the day for his graduation. We drive, get in the car. About a quarter of the way there, my car overheats. What's going on here? Get back in the car, got some water in the radiator, went a little farther along, it overheats again. We do this for a little while, and finally we get to his graduation. As you can tell, we made it. But something clicked in me at that moment in time. Something changed in the way I perceived the world, that the universe is going to simply unfold the way it's supposed to. Things are going to work out the way they are meant to work out. And I just got such a great sense of peace. We made it to his graduation. We had a great time. You know, I stopped fearing time at that point. I stopped looking at my life and chunking it out into time frames that we typically do. By this age, I need to have so much in my retirement account. This age, I need to have done this. By this age, I'm going to retire. This age, I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to sit on a port swing somewhere and wait till I die. I don't think like that anymore. I look back at my life and the things I've been able to do. I've hiked mountains, not just regular mountains. I've hiked in the Andes with my friends. I've hiked in the Scottish Highlands. I've been in the Italian Alps, the Rockies, the Appalachians. I've scaled a castle wall in Italy. Uh, a month ago, I took up boxing. Maybe next year, I'll take up Spanish. Maybe in the next decade, I'll take up Italian. Finally be able to learn to read more than just the menu. <laughs> but time, for me, is not to be feared. I don't look at my time now as these periods that we all tend to do. I love time. So the third part of this uh, conversation is time is precious. And I think we all know that. Sometimes that seems cliche. Time is a very precious thing. When I look at Doctor Who, he goes around and he scoops up earthlings. He takes us on his adventures with him in the TARDIS. And it's an amazing thing. But he realizes, too, the humans age. He regenerates and she regenerates. But the humans age and they suddenly die. They don't go on forever. And he realizes in that moment, more than any other character on television, how precious time is with those people. One night, I got home from work late, and I put my phone on the side of the bed, on the uh, nightstand, went to sleep. About 1 o'clock in the morning, I woke up. And I just felt something, you know, I needed to figure out. I don't know why. I just woke up. First thing we do, what we do when we wake up, we grab our phone. Grab my phone, it wasn't there. It had vibrated off. I left it on vibrate because I was at work all day, and it vibrated in the laundry basket. So I go, I pick it up, look at it, and I have a message. Um, 
So I'm like, okay, who called me? And it was a message from my son. He was saying goodbye. He was telling me that he loved me, that he didn't want to be a burden to anyone. And he was saying goodbye to me. I called his number back really quick. It went to voicemail. I called the police. I called the emergency squad. I drove out to his apartment on campus. They had already taken him to OSU Hospital. By the time I got to OSU Hospital, self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. I don't know how long that day lasted. I have faint memories of friends coming and going. But I do remember sitting by his bedside. At that point, it had been so much time, his brain was dying in stages. And his hand was going through some automatic uh, movements on its own, some reflex movements. I held his hand, and at one point, his hand just stopped moving. And I knew in that moment he was gone. My son was gone. We had a great nine years together, age of 22. And time is very precious. And I really hope that's one thing you all take away tonight. We never know how much long we have with one another. We may be here with friends, with family, coworkers, whatever it looks like. But I want you to remember time is a very precious thing. And every moment we get with every person that we have is an amazing thing. Thank you.